Welcome back to Canadian Justice, where we're discussing a recent Court of Appeal of Alberta case that held that the Federal Impact Assessment Act, or No More Pipelines Law, is unconstitutional. It all comes down to the division of powers, uh, whether it's a federal or a, a, a federal um, a federal law is intruding into provincial powers. So, Sean, this is kind of about the environment broadly. Where does the environment fit in the division of powers? Is it enumerated in sections 91 or 92 of our constitution that sets out the powers of the federal and the provincial governments? Well, as you can imagine, in 1867, at the time of Confederation, the environment was not in the front of mind of the founders or policymakers in the way it is today. So as a result, the environment is not one of the specifically listed matters under either Section 91 or 92. As a result of that, to link a project or, to, pardon me, to link a law to the environment, uh, a government has to figure out which of the heads of power the environmental issue arises from. And so, for example, with respect to an interprovincial pipeline, the federal government would say the head of power is its power over interprovincial transport. In contrast, if it was a province, they would link the head of power for property and civil rights and matters of a local nature to regulate environment issues with respect to those projects. So the, the Court of Appeal said that this law was unconstitutional. It was an intrusion by the federal government into provincial powers. Um, Dwight, what more can you tell us about that decision? What were some of the important parts coming out of that? Well, there are a few important parts. One of those is really a very technical process or what should be a technical process of trying to characterize what a law is about. And uh, the Court of Appeal goes through examining the evidence on uh, what this law does and what the purposes of this law are to carry out this analysis of what its pith and substance is. That's a technical legal term uh, for what the law is really about. That's going to be a contested matter, I'm sure, as, as things work their way up. Uh, at the same time, the court comments on a lot of really interesting things uh, in terms of maintaining a maintaining the system of federalism, I'll just highlight two very momentarily. So one of those is they give um, some more content to section 92A, which is the natural resource jurisdiction uh, power uh, that was adjusted in 1982 as part of the 1982 amendments. That hasn't received a lot of treatment in the courts and they've given it a really good discussion. Um, they also highlight some other aspects that are a little bit outside the division of powers, strictly speaking. Um, part of the act would allow the federal government to override the decisions of indigenous communities that are choosing to be part of natural resource projects in effect. And uh, the court draws attention to some of the paternalism present in that and in the approach of the federal government in this law. So there are lots of interesting things in this. It's a 750 paragraph judgment. I can't tell people to go away and read it. Um, uh, but if they're really interested, there's a lot there. And even even just the the introduction is a has some really really interesting uh, lines in it. So, for example, uh, the court called this law, the Impact Assessment Act, a classic example of legislative creep. Uh, Brett, what does that mean exactly? So that that's interesting. The last time this type of legislation was litigated or subject to a constitutional challenge was the Old Man River case. And the legislation at that time was, was very different. And there's been several amendments, incremental amendments since that point that have led to this act. And there haven't been any formal constitutional reference cases in each of those intervening amendments. And so we end up with this, with this piece of legislation that looks quite a bit different than the original act that was that was subject to a challenge and in fact upheld. And one of the other things that's interesting about it is the way the court characterizes this, Sean, is sort of about the centralizing power of the federal government. And they go into some of the history of the division of power in Canada and how uh, it works to preserve freedoms for people in less populous or politically uh, powerful provinces. What can you tell us about what the court said about that? 
course going to what is the fundamental bargain struck at confederation, which is between issues that for reasons of, of need at the time of confederation had to be dealt with by the central government and issues where uh, there was good reason to have diversity within local views and the differences between provinces. Uh, in this case, one of those differences is a matter of local economy and that's the importance of natural resources to the province of Alberta and the amendments that came in with section 92A to the constitution. So the court goes at great length to discuss the history of that, the importance of the province of Alberta of natural resources. And a lot of both the tone and content of the decision is based on that and based on what historically has been seen in Alberta as centralizing tendencies to at times take power away from the province right. with respect right. to natural resources. What, we've got to go to commercial break, but we will be right back to continue the conversation.